All right, welcome to this Butterfly Magic um, Colors um, video. <clears throat> what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how magical these stencils are. We've got just an overlay stencil that can be used as a complete background stencil. Just lay it on and stencil on um, a background. Or um, you can use the big open area and you can color it. And what's neat about this is I've done it all with one little spongy sponge. This is a jumbo dauber. You can also use stencil brushes and I'll show you how to do that. And then you overlay, so you've got your overlay, this is your like open area, this is your overlay. You overlay and that gives you all the finished details. Then you just connect the little areas and magically you've got a completed butterfly in like seconds. So um, I'm going to walk you through how to do this. The very first thing that I want to do, oops, I throw things on the floor, <clears throat> is I want to refresh. I've been doing all of these butterflies and I've got the back of my stencil tacky. And that's tack it over and over, which is what this looks like. And a little bit goes a long way, and you can do like a whole ton of stencils. But what this does is on this side, it's not tacky. On this side, it's tacky. And what the tacky does for you is when you put it down, it prevents when you're stippling on top, <clears throat> it prevents your paint from squishing under. So it behooves me to make sure that my tacky stays tacky around the details of the butterfly so that it prevents any bleeding under of paint and it keeps my, my um, stencil in position. So because I've used these stencils so many times with the tack it over and over, and I've been very um, jumbly with it, if you will, um, I haven't been very cautious. I'm going to refresh the tacket um, because, I mean, literally, maybe I've used them um, 15 or 20 times. It's time to refresh it, um, the tack it over and over. So I'm just going to use it flat on the jumbo dauber. <clears throat> so I've got a pile here, pull it out, flat there. I don't want to wad this on. If you see big white wads of the stuff, then you've got it too thick. And then I'm just going to refresh it. And it's okay to do this. Um, it just gets stickier again. And I'm going to make sure to just to go around um, the areas that I think are going to be compromised. And then I pull it off. You notice that I put that, applied that over just a piece of scrap paper. Um, actually, paper is a bad choice. Do not use paper. And see, I, I see a little bit of white standing you don't want any white standing or that area can be um, sticky and um, kind of stay sticky like it doesn't cure. Then I'm just going to set this someplace that um, any little residue that's on the backside won't stick to. And in my case, it's on little piles of paint buckets or whatever. And I'll apply to the rest of my stencils and be back with you as soon as they dry clear. All right, once you get them dry so that they are sticky, and of course not leaving a residue because they've dried clear. Now they're not going to leave a residue. If you get any on your hand and it doesn't seem like it'll come off, just use a little olive oil and that neutralizes it. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to press it on my pants leg or on a piece of fabric to detackify it just a little bit because you don't want it super tacky or it will tear the stencil. And do be careful with more delicate stencils. This one's not. We try not to ever make our stencils so delicate that they'll tear. Um, but some people's stencils are very, very, very delicate. You want to be careful. And what you can do in the case of delicate stencils is put tacket dots in strategic places. And what that will do for you is allow the stencil to stay, but it won't allow it to not seep under. You need to just really be careful with your application of paint. So then I'm using these pieces of vellum. And you can stick it on here and it actually stays stuck. I don't have tacket up here, but it's stuck where the tacket is but it peels off easily. You can use freezer paper, but freezer paper doesn't stick at all to the, um, to the tacket. I mean, it literally um, just lays on top of it and it doesn't stick. And what happens then is things just slide apart and you don't have a good adhesion. Now what I do with these <clears throat> stencils to store them is this wonderful Z-shaped, I'll see if I can't back you out just a little bit so you can see it. Okay, it is this loop. So I knock over the paints. Z-shaped stencil holder. I stand it up like this. And then I just use these little guys right here to clip my stencils. Now what I could also do, um, if I say have this body of stencils that is all um, butterflies, I could clip, get them all stacked up straight, I could clip all my butterfly stencils on one clip. Then I can just remove them all at one time if I know that I'm mainly going to use those stencils together. But that is a good way, and then you can just slide them around and store them. It is a great way of storing them so that you can find things. 
Okay, so we've got our stencils. We've got them stuck under their sheets. What you don't want to end up with is a stencil laying on top of another stencil sticky to sticky. That's a problem. Okay, now we'll get started making some pretty butterflies. Okay, as you can see from my butterfly stencil, I have done a million of these colorful little butterflies. And things are getting a little bit thick and a little bit chunky, and I can kind of scrape that paint off of there. If I wanted to clean the paint off of my stencil, then what I would do is I would just soak the stencil in the bottom of hot soapy water in the sink. Just plug the sink up, hot soapy water, let it sit in there. You can pile a couple of them on top of each other. And then that will get... Um, enough, it will get soft enough to just, to just gently scrub off on flat, like so you put it in the bottom of the sink, lay it down, and then just scumble over the top, and that, will, that paint will come right off. What won't come off is the tacket over and over. The tacket, you actually need an adhesive, hey, my hair is stuck to that, and that's fun. Um, you actually need an adhesive remover. I choose not to remove the adhesive at all. That way my stencil is always ready for me to use. <clears throat> I find it a little irritating to have to stop and go tack it over and over um, every time. All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to choose um, a jumbo dauber. This one's this is how they look new, and this is how they look after I've washed them out. I guarantee you, when we're done with these butterflies, you're going to have um, a paint inventory going on because there are so many strange colors that we use. Butterflies are so much fun. I'm using primary blue, which is a color I don't use very often. I'm going to make it into another blue. Um, most paint companies don't have a tremendous um, quality of blues and purples, so we have to kind of mix. This is a good pure blue, and we're going to mix a nice bright light blue. Not too light because I want the white to be able to highlight that. Okay, so I've got what I've got is something that the white's my highlight. I'm going to do it wet and wet over this blue. That's going to be my shade. I want to make sure when I'm looking at these three colors together that I can tell the difference. If this was a darker blue, I wouldn't be able to see my shadow. If it was way lighter, I wouldn't be able to see my highlight. So that's what I'm after, is something kind of in the middle. And there really isn't right and wrong. If you want it more subtle, move it one way or the other in your mix. Okay, and you want to use an offset palette knife like this. I love this one because of the flexibility. A lot of you might have palette knives that only do this, and you want to be able to muddle in. It's almost like a, a silicone spatula versus one of those stiff spatulas that you cook with. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, we've got our base coat, our shade, and our highlight all set up to go. So I'm going to put my finger in here. This um, keeps my fingers and my hands outside of my mess, which I love. And I'm going to make a little flat area down here. I don't want to scoop this up because that will make your paint go underneath your stencil. And then you're just going to stipple. I'm not worried about that middle area. I want this on the wing area. Stipple all over. And this is covering. What I've got is my board is based on neutral gray. That way when we're cutting and cropping these to put them onto the color worksheets, that makes it easiest to, to work with. Now I'm going to load just one half of my um, Jumbo Dauber in white and then I'm going to munch it off over here, keeping it on one side. It would be very easy just to pounce in the middle, but I'm keeping it to one side. You can see that I've got a very strong line right there. While this is wet, and you could re-wet it if you play with it too long or the phone rings, I'm going to blend in this area and maybe I want that a little stronger. Okay, so I can go back, get, pick up a little bit more, and go right over the top. Pick up a little bit more. Turn my brush, if you will, around, and do the same thing going this way. Walk it up. Okay, now on the back of my brush, or my sponge, I'm going to apply the dark blue. And the dark blue is going to go out from the outer wing and walk in towards the middle, about ending about the middle. And the middle of my um, brush is um, neutral, this middle color, so I can just tap right up and down in the middle, keeping the light on the light side, dark on the dark side, turn it around, and now I can do the other side. Imagine how fun these would be to do on flower pots. Um, we've got flowers on these. You could do flowers and butterflies and um, just all kinds. You could have so much fun with this. I think these are just such a neat product. Okay, I'm going to take this off. 
Okay. And I'm going to apply it to my vellum. If I have any little blurbles, because maybe my paint was too thick or something like that, I just take out a little bit of my base coat color. I think it's super important not to be fake with this and to show you every little kind of cheater trick that I know. Take a round brush. The number one thing is not to use too much paint. And I'm just going to go back in, and it's best to wait till it dries. I'm just going to go back in and just base coat it just right wherever it leaked or whatever um, with my round brush and the, the background color. Now I have to allow this to dry, and then we'll do the top details. Now while waiting for that one to dry, I'm going to go right below it, and I'm going to make a variation of that. <clears throat> and it will seem like it's not a serious variation, but I think ultimately um, when you start getting into your um, teals versus your blues, I think it's very important. Here's how I'm going to neutralize the color in this. One way that I could do it is just to swap, um, especially if I haven't been too generous. And I was a little bit generous up there, and I want to just keep my stencil kind of off of this, so what can I do? I can take a brush or something like that and just kind of lay it down there just to keep that stencil from getting the wet paint on there and then putting a surprise on my piece later on. So I can blot this here. Now my color is going to be here. I'm not sure that that dark blue is going to get neutralized enough. Let's see. Yeah, it's coming off onto there, so I'll go ahead and blot that and then I just plunk them this water basin is the most fantastic thing. It has plenty of room and three slots for things. So I just submerge them in the water, make sure they get all wet, and I just keep filling that. And then at the end of the day, I just go wash them. <clears throat> okay, so we'll switch to a new one, and we'll go into our turquoise. Okay, and now I'm going to move that brush and use my hand. I want to make sure I'm pressed down. So now this is going to be a tealer, a more tealy butterfly. And you can enhance the teal as much as you want to. This one I'm going to have to hit that with the blow dryer, and um, I'm going to have to give it two coats because it's not covering over that gray. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and put this back over here to keep that off. And um, by the time I hit that with the blow dryer, that will be dry, and we can show you both at once. All right, we're back. And we'll go in with our next coat. Notice I just left the stencil right in place. No need to move it. Now I'm going to blot this off of my paper towel. Okay, you go through quite a few paper towels this way. Not a huge amount, but enough. We'll go into a little bit of the white on one side of our so-called brush. Now this neutralizes that... Um, that teal quite a bit and it's going to when we put this um, next color on it's going to make this one look a little bit like that one but the next step we take it away and we make it be um, we make the um, turquoise color the teal color come through with the following well not the following step but the one after that now we're going to use that same blue to come through around the outer edge and then up and down in the middle to blend. And if you get a very distinct line like I have, just walk back and forth and then that'll blend it down. Flip it around. You can do variations on this by um, by going ahead and doing just the tops, going straight across the top, leaving the bottom clean, or going straight across the bottom, leaving the top clean. You could do a totally different color on the top or the bottom. Okay, I like my blends, so I'll go ahead and remove my stencil. All right, I'm going to be done with this color, and I'm not going to be able to neutralize it. Well, you know, I might be able to actually neutralize this one. I will leave this one parked over on my paper towel. I've got one more blue butterfly to do. So we're going to lay this over. We're going to line up all of our edges, and it just slightly goes bigger. You're not too worried about any of the squidgy lines until you get the black on. What I love about this is this is what makes it a finished butterfly. There are two ways to apply your color. You can do it with these um, fingertip daubers. Very easy, very cheap, very fun. Um, this is mine from the whole last week and you can see that it's still wet. They have caps that keep them um, clean and dry or keep them wet actually. I'm going to clean up my edges over my paper towel because I got a little bit kind of goofy and juicy. Get out some fresh black paint. 
Now what I will tell you, um, with these dome brushes, I have discovered that I do like the dome brush better than the fingertip dauber. It just leaves a slightly cleaner line. This, however, is super simple and super affordable, so I want to show you both. Um, the dome brush is just a little bit finer um, application because it gets into, especially these are, these are not super fine, but they're fine enough where it helps to have the brush get into it. But for blending the color, I absolutely love the Jumbo Daubers. I've tried both and the, the big dome brushes, even though I'm going to be using them, um, they just don't have that blendability as much. Um, they don't have the surface space. So we'll go ahead and we'll just tap the black on. Now I'm going to be repairing any connections, not repairing, but um, connecting things. So it's important not to worry about whether or not things are completely like, oh my god, that's not black enough. And then go over and over it with juicier and juicier paint, um, making bleed under a problem. Okay, so you don't want to get too rambunctious with this. Just tap it all on there. Super simple. I've been using this one jumbo dauber, like I said, for a week or so. Okay. And we put the cap back on, otherwise you will wreck it. Love the introduction of the cap. And we peel that off. And you know what? That is a pretty snazzy looking result. So now we'll take the other two stencils ready for this so that I can move along. And I want to put something underneath that, so I'll find a brush. And we'll do that after I get it lined up. So we'll line this filthy thing up. Get that there. The black dries really quickly, so I'm not super worried about it. And then we're going to use the brush instead. Okay, so I just take it, dry brush, dry paint, stipple up and down, and then you just tap. Now I'm noticing, <clears throat> I haven't washed this stencil and this one is one of the ones that has like a million layers. What I'm noticing is that this stencil fit closer to the design. This one was outside of the design. This one I had a hard time finding my edges. It is time to wash this stencil because I've literally increased the size of it coming in. So when your stencil starts getting a little unwieldy or your brush starts getting unwieldy or your whatever, um, start looking at whether or not you need to clean things. Okay, now this step is going to be the same on all of them, so I'm not going to repeat showing you how to put this top layer on. This is absolutely the same thing, but I am going to show you the blending on all of these color. I want to keep this brush fresh, so I might put a little bit of plastic wrap or something over the head of it, so I can just keep using the same brush. And I'll get that off. And ta-da, see, I did indeed have a hard time finding my edges. Okay, but... The way that we handle that is we find our round brush and anywhere where there was an edge that wasn't right then we'll go back and we'll find it. So with my round brush I'm going to on both of these stencils I'm going to start finding the connections. So I'm just going to connect these lines so it's like connect the dots. It's super quick, it's super easy. Now you could leave them unconnected. I think that's beautiful. I don't think you need to touch it. I don't think you need to do another thing. However, I want to show you how to make these like magical, realistic looking butterflies. So that's what we're going to do is we're just going to connect everything and give it that really finished, polished look. But how simple was that to apply all of this? No pattern needed. Super, super easy. I like things when they're easy. I don't like to work super hard to make something like a fun butterfly. So right there where there's a line, we'll just go ahead and finish that line up, fill it in. Like I said, it's very fine just to leave them unconnected. Anywhere outside of here where I find that I have um, another color, I will just clean that up. This one at the top of this like monarch looking butterfly is a little bit strange. I'm going to round over the top of this and then I'm going to make that into a teardrop and that into a teardrop and then fill in the space. That's the only one that I had to kind of guess at what was supposed to be happening there. 
I could line next to this. We can do a little stroke butterfly antenna. Okay, not connected, don't worry about it. And I'm just gonna proceed that way on both of these butterflies and connect them and then I'll show you how to finish them up. One of the things that I thought of, I'm sitting here trying to worry about my, my two drawing pieces, especially since it's like summertime. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open up my, um, my airtight palette and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple mists of water over here. Just for humidity. And I'll just plunk these two tools inside here. And then if I squish that little thing down, I can just seal it shut. And then that's gonna help keep everybody fresh inside of there. And I don't have to worry about plastic bags and wasting and yada, 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 and messes. I can just keep putting my wet tools in here and they'll stay fresh. I love tools that work in multiple ways. Okay, I'm getting a little closer. Now on both of them, you can see that they kind of look like a very similar butterfly, um, but now here's how we're gonna distinguish them. I'm gonna use a number 12 flat, and I'm gonna do a float using um, Indian turquoise. And I'm gonna go in and I'm going to float at the base of this with the turquoise. And see how that just really, it picks up the tail. It's hard to distinguish it when you're on camera I feel like when I'm looking in the camera, it's not quite doing, it's not like looking more teal, um, but it definitely is to my own eyes. And I'm just going to pick up the colors that I want to do. So after you get done doing all of the basing and blending and stuff, just highlight the colors you want to increase if something didn't come out. In this case right here, maybe my white didn't stay white enough. So I might go ahead and I might float a little bit of white. To increase the vivacity, if that's a word, it is a word, it's a patiism. Okay, so we'll get that just a little bit. See how that just increased that illumination of the butterfly wing. The one thing about butterflies, you can do just about anything you want because these are like little fantasy butterflies. They don't have to be real. Oops, and I can drag my arm through the gray paint. I'm working at a kind of funny angle on this long board. Now on both of these, what we're going to do is do the, the um, primary blue. And we're going to go ahead and turn our piece. And we're going to float on all of these little jewel-shaped things. You can walk it down if you want to. You can leave the center, I'll leave that center undone, and then I'll do the other side and you can compare the two. Okay, now I'll come over here and I'll do all of them. Ooh, that's brighter. I'm not worried about going off on my black because that blue will kind of be swallowed up by the black. Come down here and do this guy right here. You know, so which one do you like better, where I leave the whole inner space open or the other way? Your choice. Okay, and so we'll just get those all done. Now we'll go up and we'll do the same thing to this guy. And we'll just increase. I can afford to be a little bit stronger on him because I've really made it a quite a darker um, butterfly, a stronger colored butterfly. So these outer ones can be much stronger. Okay, so we do have two very different flavors of butterfly. We've got a blue, and then we've got one leaning into the teals. And the next one that we'll do is we'll do a soft baby blue one. We need to add our white dots. So I'm going to go ahead and load a nice healthy amount. For the big one up here, I've done a big healthy white dot at the tops. Just kind of randomly put that dot in there. And then I'm going to let my brush kind of gradually just decrease in pressure Press, lift, 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 and then do some hash marks down at the bottom. Oops. Okay, and that's one way that you can dress up a butterfly. And then this one at the top, I put two strong ones near the teardrops up there. 
and then I've gone ahead and gone over the top. Well, we'll finish doing these graduated ones near the edge of the teardrops. And then I've gone over the edge and just done a kind of little hash mark and just on the top wing. You can choose whichever patterns you want to do. You can do any kind of pattern. Look at the pictures on Google. There's just a million ways you can dress up a butterfly wing. And besides my antenna up here, we have two finished butterflies. Now I'm going to switch to my dog face um, butterfly. This is what I guess, it's actually the Elizabeth stencil. This butterfly was fashioned after the dog face. I'm going to release my little spongy sponge. And I'll go ahead and take out my, um, a little bit of my water escaped. So I would, maybe a sponge in there would be better than having loose water. And you could probably rest that, I think, a little bit. I tipped it over when I was setting it down. So I'll put it in a different spot, and that doesn't feel wet. Okay, we're changing our colors, and I'd like to show you one of the reasons that I mixed um, the little blue color is, see how crystal and beautiful clear this is? And then you come down to baby blue. This is the closest I could come. And see how this is a toned blue. This means there's a little bit of black or something in this to make it just be a little bit not so like, ah, brilliant. Well, it's not so great for my, I want a brilliant butterfly. So now we're going to make a nice, soft, delicate little butterfly. So we'll use that to our benefit. So I'm going to neutralize my color. And this is what my neutralized um, sponge looks like. I'll want to change sides of my paper towel as I go along. That way I can blot onto different parts. Okay, so I want to get that sponged off, pick up the baby blue, and see if I get it neutralized enough. Yeah, I see a little bit of dark there, so I'll just make sure to keep that to the outer edge. If I do two coats, that will probably go away by the second coat. The one thing I like about these sponges is they're very dense, which means that they don't absorb like squish, squish, squish like water, you know. There's not tons of extra stuff in them. Okay, we'll allow this to dry. And we'll get on with our details. All right, we want one more coat of the blue. I'm gonna blot onto my paper towel just in case. I'm going to put sapphire blue. Actually, we're going to do white first. Always do your light colors first, otherwise you can get things muddy. I'm going to pick up white, blot on my palette for blending, and then in the middle I'm going to create that wonderful lightness while it's wet. I've noticed that the toned colors, because there's a little bit of black in them, tend to swallow up the color white. So I'm going to repeat that one more time. Not too juicy. Get a little bit dry, and then try not to over blend. Now, how can we reinforce that white without going through all these shenanigans? We could just float it on when we get the when we pull this off. We can just go ahead and float it. I'm going to blot that. Pick up sapphire blue on the opposite side, and then I'm going to bring that in quite a ways. The black on this um, on this butterfly, okay. The black on here comes in quite a way. So in order for that to show, we need to bring it in quite a bit. Okay, and isn't that beautiful? And you can roll it across the top and bring it around. You can go just straight down the side. There's so many ways, and don't forget that every one of these butterfly stencils can be used with any of these color combinations. So really, your variety is endless. Like you can do that color on this butterfly. Um, you could put, you could decorate these wings. If you didn't put this top detail on, you could decorate these wings in any fashion you want. Okay, I think that that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off my stencil. Brilliant, look how clean that is. And I'll reapply this to my, um, my sheet and allow that to dry. I'm going to go ahead and put the black on without being on camera just because I think it just gets very boring and then I'll come back to you and show you how we finish up the butterfly. Now on the blue one down here, the soft blue, we could leave it soft blue like that <clears throat> or we can play with it. 
one way or the other isn't a problem. I love that there are no rules. So I'll increase my white just to soften that up. So see how that just makes it just pop just a little bit more. <clears throat> Sometimes when paint dries, it just dries down so much darker than you think it's going to. You need these steps. Okay, and then we could increase our blue if we don't think that that's brilliant enough. I kind of like the softness, but I'll go ahead and show you the increasing of blue. We could increase with a float of sapphire. And that's just going to clean up that blue out there. Okay, or I could reach across my palette and go into my primary blue. And I could, let's do this down here. I can give it just a wash of a very vivid blue. Oops. That is a very strong float. Tap, tap, tap. So see the difference. We've got across here, we've got just this, this um, prime, nope, sapphire blue, and down here the primary. This one glows a lot more. Anytime you want to re achieve a glow, get out your pure pigment colors. They're like dioxazine purple, primary blue, red violet things like that. The colors that you just, when you put them on your palette, you go, whoa. Those are the ones that haven't been muddied down by whites and grays and, and other colors. So now we have different variations of a blue butterfly. With, and you could decorate these wings, you could leave them alone. One of the things I wanted to talk about is when you put your, let's look at this, um, this overlay. This overlay has different sections to it all over the place. You could just do black lines at the bottom. You could just do black lines at the top. You could just do the top of them. There's a lot of different things you could do. You could do them in, we're going to show you different colors and stuff. But the thing is, is just because it's all there doesn't mean that you have to use it. So you can change how much of it you use. All right, let's move on to green. All right, I've got my stencil placed down and we've got some new colors. We're going to move into a green color. This is a Bahama blue. And we're going to stipple this. These jumbo daubers just wash out. I just press them on the bottom of the sink in running water and they just wash out really nicely. I'll blot that on my paper towel. And then we'll go into our white. And oh, actually, you know what? We're not doing the white. We're going to go from just this base coat to using our detail and then from there we'll go ahead and decorate each one of them like little jewels. Alright, well I'm waiting for my top one to dry. I'll just prop that up with my brush. Scooch that down and now we are going to use our sour apple and do our next green butterfly. We'll get that all based, and we are going to have to hit the blow dryers, and that'll get both of them dry because that's not covering up my gray. All right, we'll go ahead and do. Whoops! Ah! Hey, you know what? If you roll these things into paint, it doesn't help keep your hands clean. I like it much better when I keep my hands clean. Okay, wipe that all off. All right. So I'll move this up here. Rebase coat. By working wet and wet, what you're doing is you're allowing the paint to blend into each other. Um, I'm going to blot my paper towel, and then I'm going to pick up my yellow. This is going to make the colors belong to each other and be family. Okay, so I'm going to use this color at the outer edge. I don't want to blot off yellow because yellow is going to get swallowed up by anything. There's not usually as much pigment in yellow. So I'm going to go out here, I'm going to really drag that in, and that's just going to give us some illumination on that wing. Okay, but see how it's not really standing up for itself very much. Okay, but it's definitely brighter than it was. Now I'll blot that off, just so I don't have stray random strong paint. Now I want to show you a difference in some colors. I was going to go into this festive green color, but then I found this darker Kelly um, Kelly green. Kelly green will make a much stronger look, but they're both in the same vibrancy, so you could use either one of these successfully. 
The thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to go across color families like into, um, let's go into something, I, I only have pure colors out, but you wouldn't want to go into something cloudy like this blue if you're using these vibrant colors. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your colors. So now pick up the Kelly, and that's going to be inside. So see how we reverse that? And then I'll blot towards it to blend it in. And then I can even go into that yellow and walk that in a little bit more. Okay, so you can decide if you want to have the dark be on the inside. Whoops, hello, don't touch it while it's wet. If you want the dark to be on the inside or the dark to be on the outside, and both of them are right, there is no wrong with this. As I'm getting ready to do this, I look at my sample, I realize this is the one that I mixed my black in with my base color, and it makes a lovely gray, and I'm going to wipe off some of that excess because that will definitely bleed under. And it's just a little bit more neutral, and it's got a kind of an elegance to it. Remember to blot off on the paper towel. It's not going to be as strong. The more striking your colors are, the more drama um, you're going to have. Now, maybe this one I don't want as much drama in the black, and maybe I want more drama um, in the decorations that I'm going to do. Okay, so we've got that. My brush is holding up just beautifully in that um, container with a little bit of water in it. All right, so to do the jewel stencil, what we're going to do is we're going to do the um, this bluegrass green and a nice strong float. And try not to run over all my paints, if I get you on camera. I've got a pile of paints back there. And we're going to just do little C strokes and walk them down. And you could treat all of these monarch looking butterflies the same way. You could put jewels on all of their wings. You would just do the same exact technique um, using the colors that go with that butterfly. Let's get those all done. And then we do the inside with the white. The paint's drying out just a little bit. inside just walk it out with some white and I think I'm still a little bit wet so walking means that we start here with little strokes and then just walk it across and if it's floating around like mine is then it's too wet and you need to have a really much drier float to keep it controlled in these areas if you need to replace a little bit of black you can do that don't be afraid of touching on the black because you can just base right over the black. Black is a wonderful cleanup tool. Okay, we'll just do that to all of them. Oh. When you're painting, you want to make sure to change the angle of the position of the thing that you're painting on, or you're going to have messy results like I'm having right now. Okay, now to finish off this butterfly, we're going to take, I'm going to use my Raphael because it gets the finest point on it. And one of the things I wanted to share about this brush basin, I was reflecting on this just a minute ago. Here's my brush basin. Notice that it has a handle, which I absolutely adore because you can carry it to the sink easily. but it has these little notched things that you can set your brushes on. The brush basin that I had before had those holes in the side that made like a trap. So if I moved my hand from side to side, I'd knock my whole water basin over. And the height of this is higher, and it actually allows you to slosh around a bit more without sloshing out over your, um, over your piece. The um, extra little thing that it has on board is it has this last little basin. If you use color float or any material like that, or you just want to easily access a little bit of water that you can see, um, this is perfect. And it also works with our brush cleaner, and this plastic is impervious to that cleaner, so it won't eat the, the plastic. Sometimes plastics, um, paint is plastic, and brush cleaner is designed to eat plastic. 
um, but not this plastic. It's a different kind. So just a wonderful improvement, but I set my Raphael up on those little grids so that it's A out of the way and B it can soak in the paint. All right, I'll dry off my brush. That just brings it to a super duper tight point. I'll go into my um, paint and then I want to leave little dots on these um, these dark edge um, the shaded <coughs> pardon me the shaded edge <coughs> little sea strokes and then I want to dot down at the base and that's a, ooh, that was a lot of paint we just want to give it that kind of jewel look and we just do that to all of them. Do them on all the same sides. There we go. Add some antenna and finish your other side and you're good. All right, next we'll go ahead and finish up our bright green butterfly. And with him, we're just going to float him Float them along in La La Land here. We're going to float his colors to make them stronger. Okay. If you do a really dry float, then that will make the colors really strong. And then lay your brush back and allow it just kind of to pat the color on. And that will help as well. Now you can take your Kelly Green. And I'll swap this guy around. and you can just strengthen the colors in the middle. Super simple to make a beautiful butterfly. And then repeat on the other side. All right, we're gonna do some final white highlights on the green butterfly. We're gonna do big, little, 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 and then just kind of fade them. If you want to really fade them out, just kind of touch them afterwards, and then that gives them just a little bit more faint look. Oops, wrong. If you want them faded, remember. If you want to make them streak, you can just pull them a little bit, and that's kind of a neat look, too. And get drier and drier paint, and that helps as well. You want to add your antennas to everybody, don't forget if you're using one of the stencils that doesn't have antenna. To get my butterflies lined up while I'm filming them, I'm using a giant T-score in my ghostwriter to give myself some nice straight columns. It occurs to me that this would be a really nice um, piece to have in a sh at a show or something to show what all the butterfly stencils would do and all the color combinations. So um, using T-squares keeps everything nice and straight. And then the lines erase with spit, water, varnish, and all that. That's what the ghostwriter does. It's a uh, ceramic lead instead of, uh, and that's a gray lead. And then that's a tracer and a padded grip. I can't even begin to tell you how awesome this tool is. All right, so we're going to go into our purple butterfly, one of our purples. And that is going to be... This thing looks like such a flower power like stencil right now because it's so messy. And at a certain point when you get too much paint on your stencil, what happens is um, you can't see the edges, so you can't see where you're placing it. So after that, I generally tend to want to um, clean up my stencils once I can't see where I'm going. We're going to use Vivid Violet. This is an interesting one because um, the colors are just kind of strange. It's Vivid Violet Purple Pizzazz, and the names of the colors are fantastic. Oh, that's Wild Orchid. Okay, I'm going to find my colors. All right, we're going to go start off with the Vivid Violet. And that's going to be our lightest color. Generally speaking, I'm using the lightest color. I don't know if you've noticed that. The lightest color is what I'm basing it in, and then all the other colors will take to that color. So I'll have to do another coat. So I'll hit the blow dryer and that way we'll move through this one. All right, we'll do another coat. And get 
just a little bit of a pebbly texture. When you're all done and everything's dry, you can sand it if you don't like the little bit of pebbliness. If you tap it extra, the pebbles get a little bit finer. I'm going to blot this on my paper towel, which is now disgusting. And it's time to change. And now we're going to get into our um, purple pizzazz. I want to blot it one more time. And on one side of my applicator, we're going to go for the light in the middle. And so we'll go for purple pizzazz out here, the outer edge. And make sure to keep some of that pink really nice and fresh because that's what makes it beautiful. But you do want to bring the color in enough to be able to be seen. I'll blot that, and because I'm going from purple into purple, in this case, now I'm going into grape juice, I'm going to go ahead and just lo load that dark on the purple pizzazz side, which will leave my pink side nice and clean. And this is one of those times where I want it to dry just a little bit extra. I'll go ahead and just tap nicely. I want that in there, but I don't want it to cover up the purple pizzazz. Okay, and then we'll take that off. Allow that one to dry, and I'll base the next one next. We're going to go into our Victoria stencil. I think I've got that wonky just a little bit. Yeah guess it won't matter too much. We're going to use um, lilac paint and it'll take two coats. The blow dryer will help dry both of our stencils. Both of our base coats, I guess. And this one I want to look a little bit more elegant. So while I'm sitting here with stuff laying around, the way we're going to make this color seem more elegant is we're going to put a touch, and I do mean a touch, of black in it. And that is going to tone it, and toned colors tend to be more elegant colors. It's going to change it from, hello, I'm purple, to hello, I am a lovely, um, I don't know what the color, the name color for this is, but it's just going to give it just a little bit more elegance. See how that knocks it back, takes away the brightness out of it. the name color? Okay. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay. So, see if I'm dry enough to give myself one more coat. Yeah. I'll blot that on the paper towel and then pick up some of this elegant purple. Okay, and then this one, we are going from the outside in. And we want to just keep our color fading nicely, so I might rock back and forth into the, the clean side. You could reapply the clean side too if you wanted to. The wet and wet is what the key, what's key here? I'll drag that in just a little bit more because now I'm going to do something crazy and I'm going to go just even more with the black into that same color and really give it some depth. Now we'll use that same side of our sponge and we'll deepen everything that we just did. But we don't want to bring it all the way in and cover up that beautiful color that we just left there. So just give it depth and these vellum sheets are fantastic for storing your stencils. Absolutely can't believe how much better they make it. Okay, so I've got that there. I'll hit it with the blow dryer and we'll get to the details. Okay, now we're going to shade this bright butterfly with a little bit of grape juice at the back. Okay. 
and just deepen the colors. Anytime you're doing this, you just want to deepen the colors back up with whatever color you meant to stipple there, and that just makes things a little less fuzzy and a little bit stronger. You can walk color in. I could use the other colors. I could do a little dioxazine purple at the base if I wanted to change his tone to a more purple. We're going to add some white dots. If I had some white paint out. I have a lovely killer fly flitting around here. Okay, so we're going to do some dots of white. I'm just going to follow the shape. And notice I'm not trying to keep the brush pointy. I'm just trying to make interesting, irregular shapes in a shape-following direction. Now, on this butterfly, I kind of like him just kind of plain. Um, you could put dots of color out here if you wanted to. Or you could skip it whichever way you wanted to do. I like him kind of plain like that. I think he's got a neat little mothy kind of elegance. Alright, I'm going to neutralize this light purple color with my pink chiffon. Blot it on the paper towel. And I'll do it one more time, and if that doesn't do it, I'll have to change applicators. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. Just really blotting out the dark purple side is what I'm after. Okay. Now we'll base this with the this is pink chiffon. To do two coats. Now don't forget all the flowers can be done the same way. So when we're doing the flowers, use the fingertip daubers, fill it in, and then do dark around the edges and light in the middle. And that will be really pretty. Alright, here we go. We're going to I've got the second coat on. I'm going to load the um, poodle skirt pink onto one side. And we're going to work that from the inside out. I'm trying to keep my um, paint out of my dots there with the brush. We'll work that out onto the outer arm there. Go back and deepen it. I'm going to blot that on my paper towel and then I'm going to pick up Royal Fuchsia. Is that Royal Fuchsia? Yeah. And then I'm going to deepen that color right in the middle. Excellent for little girls, projects, babies. Do the baby blue one, do some little girl stuff. What I like about the stencils is they come in a variety of sizes, so every butterfly doesn't have to be this size. We'll let that dry and we'll get the top um, details on. All right, we'll take that fuchsia pink and we'll just deepen. Look at how much more vibrant that becomes. Once again, this is one of those more pure colors and so that will sit and glaze things rather than base over them. The more pure and beautiful and the more like a glaze you get. You can walk that out if you wanted to bring that out a little bit. And I don't think I want to do any highlighting on the back. I could, if I wanted to add a little white or something like that, I could do that, but I think I like it just like it is. All right, we're going to start off this monarchy colored one. Now, this is where I've kind of departed. I've got a monarch colored butterfly, but I've used this other thing. This would be very appropriate to do, but then so is this. So I'm going to start with sapphire, saffron, not sapphire. I'm going to do two coats of it. Once again, every one of these butterflies can be used for every one of the color schemes. 
And don't forget, you can use the butterflies all over as an all over background piece. All right, we're gonna go for our third coat of the saffron. Yellow is always a non-pigmented color. I know I say that about every time I use the color, but it's really important to know it's not just you. I'm gonna blot that off. <clears throat> I'm gonna pick up the bright orange. And we're gonna go with bright orange. We're gonna do this one from the outer tips <clears throat> in. And we're going to bring them in diagonally, not just straight down. So I won't do anything in the middles. You could also do it just on the top and not do the bottoms. Okay, I'll blot that color. And on that same end, I'm going to pick up Oxblood. Now, Oxblood's going to be a strong color. So I am I really worked on walking it away to make it be a little lighter. And I'll even blot it once. Okay, and we'll go back to the one we started on. And this might be one of those colors that it might be better for me just to float it on. But I want to get a start on it with the, the stipple. I pulled out traditional um, burnt sienna, but I don't think that's going to work for us here. I, we're going to just have to float some of this color on there to get it to stick. Okay, take that off. I've got one little bit of a mess sitting here. Right here, I didn't get that well blended. I can go back into the yellow side. I can make that side a little more yellow than it was. And I can just go ahead and fade that in without the stencil. Now I did just go out of the line, but I'll just take my little round brush and my base coat. Base coat's always an eraser. Base coat is always a great eraser. And I got some outside of here. Sometimes I'm not very careful. All right, we'll let that dry. All right, just an overview on this um, Monarch colored one. Um, it turned out so nice that I don't want to touch it with anything. You could put white dots on it, which I've got on the color card, but you know, honestly, this one I think is just pretty just like this. So we'll get ready to do the next yellow one. All right, next we're gonna do Taffy Cream on a yellow butterfly. And of course it's yellow, so we'll need two coats. You can stay out of your black bodies in the middle if you want to. That doesn't matter. Sometimes I go over them, sometimes I don't. And let that dry, and we'll come back for another coat. I've got my second coat on there, and now we've got a little bit of strangeness going on. We're going to take our yellow, um, I think it's cad yellow. Yeah, cad yellow. We're going to load that. And we're going to bring that down from the top and not bring it all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so we'll keep that, that bright yellow down there, or the soft white yellow. And then we're going to go into just a smudge of really flattened butterscotch. And the butterscotch is going to come out from the middle and walk its way up a little bit stronger. And then we'll use that clean side to go back and clean up, blend anything. You can blot things off. We can go back into a little bit of the brighter yellow if we want a little bit more of that. Don't forget we can also glaze later. If you feel like you're picking too much and you're playing too much, then leave it alone and do it after. Okay, that's got a pretty good fade. I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Um, I've got some bright orange that I'm going to add, but I'm going to add that after. And now you can see, did you see how many coats I was doing and how thick I was getting that? That's the, 
that's the difficulty. There's the rub. If you get it too thick on your brush, which I was trying to make yellow, I was trying to force yellow to base coat, then I bled under because I just got it way too thick. Okay, so you've got to keep the layers thin and smooth, and then you won't have any little accidents like that. Okay, but it's easily cleaned up. There we go. Hit that with a blow dryer, and we'll be ready to move on. Okay, now we're going to do something a little bit different over here with this butterfly. We're going to go into a brown color, and you get into really a lot of variables when you start using things like the browns on the bases, or pink on pink, um, and stuff like that. As we get into the upper area, we'll go ahead and do it all brown. And I'm going to go ahead and mix just a little bit of my brown with my yellow just to soften that. And I'll go down over this lower area with that softer color. Now I'm getting a little thick again, so hopefully I'm not having any problems on my stencil. I'll blot off on my paper towel, and now I'll go into black. I did switch to a clean brush so that I could get a pure um, brown color out of that. And then I'll just bring the black down just a little bit. And that would give us just a lovely little fade. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, now I'm going to just leave this disconnected because I think the fuzziness looks really neat. I'm going to get out a dry brush which has tapered ends and shaved both ways. And I'm going to go into my bright orange. And I'm going to streak the bright orange. Turn this so that I can get a good angle. And I try to stay out of my black paint. So I'm just going to streak the bright orange in. Now this goes a little bit more into a decorating butterflies, which is probably going to be another set of worksheets later on. Um, just getting the colors and knowing what to do with your stencils, I think, is the most important first lesson. But see how that orange just intensifies. If we're putting it on dark, it's just going to be really strong like that. Not dark, if we're putting it on dry. <clears throat> and we'll let that dry. Whoops! Flip our brushes off of our brush stand. One of the times when it makes a little liar out of me, I'll shove them over just a little bit. Not normally on such a big surface here. Okay, yeah, I like that a lot. All right, one of the ways that I can get a really good faded um, dot up here is to go wet on wet. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these in with the cad yellow while they're wet. Okay, and that just gives us kind of a faded little streak look. I'm going to go into my orange, maybe my butterscotch, and I'll give my butterscotch downward dots, lower dots. And we'll go ahead and put a little bit of, you can put eyes and things like these on the, the butterflies. I've got just a dot down at the base, just right in that little receptacle right there. And you could do all kinds of other stuff, but like I said, that's a whole other subject when we get into decorating the butterflies and, and um, all the variable things that you can do. We've done a little bit here on this project, but not, not as much as I think I could do. It could be a long video. I want to kind of do a natural butterfly, a little bit natural look. I'm going to neutralize the color with honey brown. <clears throat> I'm looking at this color honey brown, and it's one that I don't use very often, but it is a really beautiful color. It's got a really good richness to it. It's not quite an orange, not quite a yellow, not quite a brown. I like this color. I think I'll be popping this out a little bit more. It's like a mini milk chocolate, which I use a lot, so I think I could love that. So if you look at the palette, I've got the honey brown, the milk chocolate, and that is just uh, yummy. All right, so I'll put milk chocolate on one side. I think that one coat will do it. And then I think we'll go ahead and do something a little bit different this time, and we'll shade up from the bottom. Leave the light on the top. So just go kind of kitty corner. Just 
go across the base. All right, I found my cocoa. So we'll go into the clean end where the honey brown was. Put just a little bit of cocoa on there and just walk that over that tip just to brighten it just a little bit. Okay, and I think we'll take just a smidge of our asphaltum and just deepen that edge. Asphaltum is pretty transparent as well. That's a pretty, pretty color scheme. And we'll allow that one to dry. Now with this butterfly, we're going to go ahead and base its um, details with soft black instead of black, which should just give it a lovely melt in your mouth chocolate butterfly feel. Okay, very natural looking butterfly, and you know, I don't think besides connecting my dots, there's much that I want to do with this. Um, we could go into a little bit of the um, taffy plus cocoa. We could give it a little bit of dots while it's wet. And I think that's perfect. All right, we're going to do this top butterfly. And we're going to do it in two color schemes. So I've got two applicators in the bottom so that the wing itself gets whispering turquoise. All right, the base is going to get, um, yes, it is sea breeze, which I don't think that's a color I've ever even used. I had to shake it 800 times, but boy, is it pretty. You want to be real careful about getting your um, applicator real close to those thin edges. You can switch to a big dome stencil brush if you need to. That'll give you more control. Okay. And that sure is coating well. Alright, so next we'll put the green side into the color bluegrass green just on the one side. And while this is wet, we'll go ahead and give it that bluegrass green kind of color coming off the wings. Then we'll flip it around and we'll give the other side some of the Calypso. Yeah, you know what? I think this one's the turquoise. Which one's lighter? It's the turquoise. And there goes a pink dominoes. Okay, and we'll flip that over. This one's a little bit tricky. And we'll give that just a little kiss of that down there. Okay, and we'll let that dry. All right, so next we'll put the green side into the color bluegrass green. Just on the one side. And while this is wet, we'll go ahead Give it that bluegrass green kind of color coming off the wings. Then we'll flip it around and we'll give the other side some of the Calypso. Yeah, you know what? I think this one's the turquoise. Which one's lighter? It's the turquoise. And there goes a paint dominoes. Okay, and we'll flip that over. This one's a little bit tricky. And we'll give that just a little kiss of that down there. Okay, and we'll let that dry. So now we'll rebase with the sea breeze down here. Get all these fades in right now. Okay, and that is going to get a little bit of the um, Kelly Green. I told you you'd be using paints off this palette that out of your palette that you haven't seen in a while. I'm using paints off my palette. I haven't seen it in a while. Now we'll go into a little bit of um, 
the Hauser Dark. And from that tip in, just give that a little bit of a darkening. Okay, and we're going to let that dry, take off the stencil. All right, now we're going to shade the top wing with blue-green. And just kind of wash that over it and wash it down a little bit. I'm totally making a mess. Staying on your butterfly wing, you could try to do this with the stencil in place, but my thought is that it would um, that it would run underneath the stencil. Anything that's liquidy will run under a stencil. All right, then we're going to wash the base with what color is this? Kelly green, and we want that thin. I think I've got mine in a little base coaty, so I'm just going to keep it within very washy and that's just going to illuminate that um, soft green. And our last step is going to be to stipple with Hauser Dark Green for his wing details. Any dark color or any tone on tone color will work for this. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. I think that there's so much fun you can have with this. Look up um, butterflies online and you'll see a million different color combinations. Okay, let's see how this looks. This was by far, I think, our most complicated one. There we go. Look at how pretty that is. Just so vibrant.